Hello and welcome back to Station Ears. I'm Mick. Today we're doing a bit more science. Now today we are looking at vents, both our active and our passive vents. Because uh, we're probably one of the first things you're going to use and one of the first things you're going to use it on is probably building an airlock. So I've got a few mock-up airlocks over here. And uh, though it's taken me a long time to get to this one, it is something I have probably been using wrong. Well, not wrong, but not the most optimal way for uh, a very long time because as I say one of the first things you want to do is this probably build an airlock and it's after building many many airlocks I find out at this point of the game because I've learned a lot from doing this little this little experiment here that I'm going to have to go back and rebuild every single airlock I've ever done in the game so you have your basic airlock this is the way I've been making them for a long time I usually have the controller on the inside of course but I've just got it on the outside so I can demonstrate from the outside. Uh, we have your two active vents, just a pipe going to a passive vent on the outside and that's all it is. And um, simply push the button and it cycles through. We find that when doing it, uh, we find that the depressurization, well I've found that the depressurization goes by relatively quickly, but then it's the case of repressurizing it which actually takes time. It's depressurized, all gone pretty quickly. And you repressurize on the other side and it just goes a lot, lot slower. Now, I've been putting up with that. Well, a lot of the time I just didn't repressurize. I just let the zero repressurize and you just get a blast of air as it opens on the other side, uh, which is not always good, can cause, has caused barrages of injuries Get pelted with rocks or whatever debris lying out on the other side of the airlock. Uh, the, now the reason for that is there's a couple of things going on there. Now the vents, if you've got them put placed in tandem like this, the vent you have an interaction. This vent is a pump, and you have an interaction between the atmosphere going through the pump and into the pipe. So you're not blowing it into the other room through the vent. You're blowing it into the pipe. This is another atmospheric object. The vent and the pipe will count both together. The vent counts as a length of pipe, but you're blowing from the outside into an atmospheric object. And then you have another interaction between this atmospheric object, being the pipe, through that vent, out into the other side. So when you reverse that, once again, you have the atmosphere coming in through a passive reaction on this one here, out through the pump. So when you're pumping in, you're pumping from the atmosphere into the pipe and it can do whatever it wants. When you reverse it, you're not sucking from this side of the airlock, you're sucking from the pipe. And the speed at which that can recharge is dependent on this passive reaction between the passive vent and the atmosphere out here. So if you have very low atmosphere out here, such as Mars, it'll take a long time for the passive pressure to push gas into that pipe. So that is where the slowness is coming from. So I have been going through with devices like this to sort of say, well, if I pressurise this pipe, I will always have plenty of gas in there and we'll get a fast um, depressurise on it. Uh, so let's cycle that through first. Right there, now it's settled down right now. We can cycle it through. Now I've got high pressure on this side. So we find that now as it depressurizes the other side. Once again, there's nothing there to affect the depressurization because there's not much you can do with what's in there, aside from putting in multiple vents, I guess. Uh, but once you get to the other side, it now repressurizes from a high pressure pipe, and we find it now repressurizes rather quickly. So, not a problem. There's a solution for it, and we're open, we're good but these are pulling 100 watts each. So if you're early game, this might not be something you want to use because that is 200 watts straight up you're using right off the bat there, and that's going continuously. So uh, early one game, I sort of just decided, well, I'm going to pull them off and just replace them with vents for now and then. And I ended up with something like this. Same as that one. Yep, not a problem. But what I did notice is if we now cycle them both, I'll start this one first because I can't switch them both at the same time. As quick as we can, let them go one after the other. We go through their depressurization cycles, 
same as per usual and off we go off we go off we go <clears throat> but then when it gets to the repressurization side of things I'm thinking that was the one we started first now this one is repressurizing a lot quicker so now there is nothing oh, we're open and this one was started first and it's still going now so what's happened there um, we don't have anything in there to repower it the volume of that pipe is not enough to pressurize that room so uh, what is going on here that one's finished now what is going on here are these passive vents affected by the same output length mechanic that it affects all of our pumps um, so let's have a bit of a look at our pumps and see what is actually going on here now we found that the recharge side of it or the, the depressurization charge hasn't been changed by it they both did that about the same time so it's probably not the active vent which is doing it but let's have a look we'll start with the active vents and we'll do some experiments in our case we have our test rig here we'll be testing out the active vents I've got a couple of pressure sensors here uh, they're just feeding into a pipe into a tank and we're just going to test and see so if we got the set pressure sensors set up the amount of moles just got programming there just to count the number of moles per game tick which is being put into the tank so it should give us an indication of the speed if I switch them both on both the same setups we're both getting the same reading from both of them which is good it means they're matched calibrate our experiment now if we go and put some extra pipes onto this active vent number two which is the bottom one and switch it on again do we still have the same number okay we don't have the same number extending the pipe has actually slowed down the active vent a little bit uh, which is unexpected but it's not significantly I mean, I've got four times the pipe in there normally for the pumps you'll get four times the uh, uh, change in it um, but not on this occasion okay I've swapped out the tanks for a series of pipes we've got twice as many pipes as we have on the number two as we do on one so let's see what we get out of that one now we find they're both the same uh, okay so that is just weird it must have been okay it's probably something to do with the tank right so okay so I may have to investigate tanks as well awesome right so the vent active vent well that explains why there wasn't a, a proportional amount we're expecting it to be four times the pipe expect me four times the chain there. there's not everything is interconnected so the tanks that we were feeding it to were affecting the vents maybe it is something to do with the volume total in the tank but no the vents aren't affected by the volume so I don't know okay active vents are not protected affected by the volume of the pipe we're taking it into uh, so now we shall put we shall test the pressure so it's not affected by it is it affected by the input pressure as the pressure the, the uh, depressurization slows down as the airlock decreases I imagine so so I shall put a, a room around that one and see if we can get it to a lower pressure now I have that enclosed is fully sealed I have these vents here to try and keep that pressurized at 50 kilopascals I haven't switched it on yet so it's still at the atmospheric for 157 now if I switch it on we see that the pressure is dropping in there but the flow rate is remaining the same oh, now that it's run out of pressure there it is it is dropped uh, switch you off again and let it pressurize back up now so that is interesting it is a volume uh, not a volume it doesn't operate in volume it is operating on a fixed quantity so we can see from that that the vents are quantity driven they are not pressure driven so they will deliver a fixed quantity much like the pressure regulators uh, so regardless of what pressure you're at uh, 
these ones will just deliver the same quantity and not affected by once again not affected by the pressure not affected by the length of the output pipe how am I going to test the passive vents well I can't just switch them on at the same time and race each other so I've got no idea but uh, let's give it a go with this once again I've got the pressures two sets of pipes that will measure the number of moles being changed with each game tick so um, I've got the pipes charged to 10 megapascals uh, so if I grab a vent um, I've got no way of activating two at the same time so I don't really know what we're going to do here but anyway if I pop that on there whoa we find it operates very very quickly and it is changing with pressure right and it has equalized with the outside of it so we think we can safely say that that one is pressure dependent but it's a passive device so we're kind of expecting that but now does the length of the pipe affect that now two pipes charged up to five megapascals this time so I don't try and kill myself now I've got a lot bigger volume on this side but one on this one now I don't have any way of starting them both at the same time so um let's just see how we go I'll start the big one first and try and get the other one before I get killed ready one two Pressure. whoa High uh, that was a little bit too quick wasn't it but we find they are not finishing at the, it's definitely not taking twice as long to discharge the big one from just placing both vents that they discharge at about the same time so you can discharge twice the volume in the same time it's probably running at twice the speed so I just have to take a guess on that I can't prove it with the math but it probably is it's so it confirms what we've been seeing on our built-up experiment there the recharge was happening a lot faster with the longer pipe and our quick experiment there sort of showed that roughly it probably is as well um, but I can't think of a better way to do that so we'll have to live with that one at the moment next experiment here we have an active vent sitting right in the middle of four cells uh, you may have seen this experiment done by others but just in case you haven't I'm just going to reproduce it here now we have a pressure sensor in each room they're all well pretty much the same so this is hooked up as a remote switch it on you can see despite being at the transition of all the rooms there it is only sucking gas out of the one of them which oddly enough is the one right here closest to us where the uh, mode button is so if you want to build a multi-cell airlock you cannot just put one vent on the on the border between the two cells and expect it to evacuate the whole lot because it is only pulling gas from one corner of the of the vent if you have a multi-cell airlock you'll need to put a separate vent in each cell or it's going to take forever to work all right um oh, i guess we'll switch it over a passive vent now and see if they work the same we have the passive vent in the middle there i've put the vac active vent outside so now all the rooms are the same pressure I switch it on here we go once again we only have any sort of activity in the one room it's not covering all four quadrants of that the one of them once again this time a different one to what we got from the um, active vent but still only one now once again that leaves us to say that you cannot put a vent on a transition between two cells and expect it to work for both cells it will work on one cell and then you'll have a passive gas transfer from one cell to the other before it can be done so oops um, <laughs> so if you're relying on that sort of thing uh, okay well it wouldn't be a video if I didn't destroy something um, 
Well, if you're not destroying something, then you're not trying something new, are you? Uh, so, that's all thing. Um, you say you can't just put something on a transition between multiple cells there. You have to put one in each cell if you want to have an active effect on each cell. So, uh, so where do we come to with all of this? So I think we can say that the way I have been building my airlocks, which is the one length of pipe there to save pipes, is certainly not an optimal way of doing it. Um, the longer you make that pipe, the faster your repressurization should go. Uh, it's by no means going to make it super fast. Uh, my secondary method that I came up with here, uh, well, let's actually give that a race, shall we? Um, I'll turn them both around and we shall see. I might add a couple of more lengths of pipe to this one just to give it a bit more of an advantage. Right, so now this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lengths of pipe in that one. So I have just changed this one to have the same number of pipes. It's not cheating for it. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the vent itself counts as a length of pipe. Now, um, I'll have to figure these as far apart as I can. Well, one, two, and away we go. Now, they're both going to beat the middle one, of course, so no point even trying on that one. So that one does have the head start, and it should, in theory, be the faster one to recharge. It is finished. It has now started recycling. This one has started repressurizing. And, wow, not by much though. These two are now almost going the same speed with the same number of pipes on there which I find incredible. And that one requires 200 watts to maintain this pressure. This one is completely free. So uh, my great invention there, don't bother with it. Uh, just add a few more lengths of pipe to your to your uh, ventilation system. That will speed up your airlocks for zero power. Um, as I say, your depressurization, you can't really do much. Make your airlocks as small as possible. And um, put multiple vents in there if you want. Uh, but you recharge, just add more pipes. Yeah, the passive vents seem to be controlled by the same volume of the input pipe mechanic as the pumps are. So a little trick there. So I'm going to, have to go rebuild all of my um, all of my uh, thingos, airlocks. What do you call them? Those ones. Yep. Cool. So there are still a couple of extra little tricks you can do with your active vents, but uh, I think we've done enough for today, so we'll save them for another video. Um, so until next time, happy building. See ya.